Okay, so in this next video in uh, the playlist on calcium signaling, I want to talk about how we actually measure uh, the level of calcium in the cytoplasm of cells. So I want to talk about calcium sensors, basically. Uh, and in this, in this case, I'm not talking about endogenous calcium sensors. I'm talking about experimental calcium sensors. So if you've got a cell in which calcium is going to rise, uh, so, if you want to be able to see a calcium signal, which is a calcium rise within the cytoplasm, how are you actually going to see that? So, let's say here we have a cell, and we know now uh, that calcium is kept very, very low within the cytoplasm of this cell. So, it's usually kept around a uh, 100 nanomolar uh, concentration in the actual cytoplasm of the cell, whereas extracellularly, calcium concentration is approximately 1.5 milli, uh, millimolar, yes. Right, so uh, calcium signaling, the whole basis of calcium signaling is that locally calcium is going to go up within the cytoplasm and that, that is going to affect uh, many uh, cytosolic processes basically. So, what we want to do, basically, is create some sort of molecule that will be able to tell us when calcium goes up in a region of the cell, so that we're actually going to be able to see where calcium is going up and where you're getting calcium signaling. So that's the topic for this video, calcium sensors. Right, and the main calcium sensor is a sensor called Fura 2. Uh, so Fura 2 is a calcium sensor, basically, and we can use it to uh, measure the level of calcium in portions of the cytoplasm. And it was developed in the 1980s uh, by a scientist known as Roger Chen, who actually is the same scientist who developed most of, I think his name's spelled like that, he's um, uh, the same scientist who developed most of the, um, most of the, um, cyclic AMP sensors as well. Uh, so he did a lot of, he's done a lot for the field of calcium and cyclic AMP signaling. And he received the Nobel Prize, I believe, in uh, 2008 for his work on calcium sensors, uh, i.e. for this development of Fura 2. Right, okay, so um, f how does Fura 2 work then, basically, is going to be an important question. So, um, basically the idea is that we are going to put Fura 2 into our cell. So here is our Fura 2 molecule here, and the idea is this. Fura 2 can bind calcium, but initially let's talk about it in the unbound state. So that initially let's have a molecule of Fura 2 which is unbound, i.e. it has no calcium bound to it. And then basically what we can do is we can, um, we can stimulate it with uh, wavelengths of uh, electromagnetic radiation with wavelength 340 nanomolar. So basically, Fura 2 is a fluorophore. If we send in radiation of uh, wavelength 340 nanomolar, then what happens is that Fura 2 will start emitting radiation at a wavelength of 510 nanomolar. So basically, we send in uh, radiation which carries energy, and Fura 2 will, uh, will absorb that radiation, it will gain the energy from that radiation, and then it will emit another photon uh, of a different frequency, of this frequency 510 nanomolar. And basically, uh, Fura 2 has a certain ability to absorb uh, photons of this wavelength, basically. So, uh, let's say we send in about 10 photons, uh, then uh, Fura 2 will absorb a certain fraction of them, basically. Now, there is another wavelength of light that we can use to excite Fura 2, and that wavelength is 380 nanomolar. And of course, you can use the ones in between, but this is what's done experimentally. We use 340 nanomolar and 380 nanomolar. So, um, when we send 380 nanomolar uh, um, wavelength, na sorry, not nanometers, not nanomolar, nanometers, 
and we send in uh, photons of wavelength 380 nanometers, uh, then Fura2 can also interact with these. And again, it absorbs some of them, but it absorbs a certain fraction of them. And then it will also emit radiation again at this frequency of 510 nanometers, uh, rather wavelength for 510 nanometers. So this is the important concept that if we send in a certain number of photons, let's say we send in 10 photons of 340 nanometers, and then in another experiment we send in 10 photons of 380 nanometers, then Fura 2 will basically absorb a certain fraction of them. So a certain fraction of these photons will actually get absorbed. So uh, let's, for example, say that uh, 0.6 or 60% of these photons uh, get absorbed, and let's say potentially 70% of these photons get absorbed. So, if we send in the same intensity of radiation onto uh, Fura 2 of these different uh, wavelengths, basically, we will get a different amount of uh, radiation of um, five and of wavelength 510 nanometers coming back at us, and that's because of these photons of this frequency, only a, a certain fraction of them were absorbed, and a bigger fraction were absorbed here. So you're going to get more um, emission of uh, photons of wavelength 510 nanometers in this case, basically. And I don't know whether it is the case that Fura 2 prefers uh, 340 to 380. I think it's actually the other way around. I think 340 is preferred to 380. But the principle is that it will absorb uh, photons. Um, it will have different affinities for absorbing photons of different wavelengths. And uh, the amount of radiation that you get back when you stimulate it with a certain intensity of radiation of this wavelength will be different to the amount of radiation you will get uh, being emitted uh, when you stimulate Fura 2 with, wave, uh, with, frequent, uh, with photons of this wavelength. Okay, now, here comes the big idea. When calcium binds to Fura 2, so if calcium goes up in the cytoplasm, then uh, calcium is going to bind to Fura 2. And basically, Fura 2's affinity uh, or affinity for absorbing these uh, photons of these given wavelengths changes. So these numbers change. So the ratio between how much uh, radiation you're going to get emitted when you stimulate Fura 2 with uh, photons of uh, wavelength 340 nanomol, uh, nanometers and uh, photons of uh, wavelength 380 nanometers is going to change basically. So um, usually I think if we actually draw, if we actually look at this, um, let's, have, let's draw a graph basically. So let's, um, let's plot wavelength along this x-axis. So we've got 340 nanometers here, and we've got 380 nanometers, okay? And if we plot on the y-axis, if we plot on the y-axis uh, the fluorescence, basically, how, i.e. how much of this, um, uh, these photons of wavelength 510 nanometers you're getting back, so the fluorescence, if we plot fluorescence, then for each one of these, we'll get a certain fluorescence, basically. So let's say um, if we fire photons of 340 nanometers, uh, then you'll get maybe a fluorescence up there, and 380, you might get fluorescence down here. And we're firing the same intensity, basically. So we're firing the same number of photons at each Fura 2. Right. So when, uh, when you uh, have Fura 2 bound to calcium, this is going to change, basically. So let's say um, let's say they change slightly. So maybe this one goes slightly down, and this one might go slightly up. So the ratio between them changes. If you look at the uh, fluorescence of one compared to the fluorescence of the other, their ratio is going to change, and that's important. Now, if calcium goes up in the cytoplasm, and you have Fura 2 in that cytoplasm, so let's show this. Let's show our cell in which we have transfected this Fura, well, in which we've filled uh, the cytoplasm with Fura 2. So we've got Fura 2 in the cytoplasm here. And remember, you don't just have one molecule of Fura 2. You'll have absolutely loads of molecules of Fura 2. So I need to draw quite a few molecules of Fura 2, otherwise you won't, 
get the message, basically. You need to, uh, because it's not just about there being an on-off state. Uh, so far, we've discussed that Fura 2 can be in two states. It can have not calcium bound to it, and it can have calcium bound to it. But the reality is there are loads of Fura 2 molecules in here. And when calcium is high, not all of them are going to have calcium bound to them. So uh, the level of calcium in this cell, so the calcium concentration, will determine uh, what fraction of the Fura 2 molecules have calcium bound and what fraction don't. So at a certain calcium concentration, you will have some Fura 2s which are bound to calcium and some which are not. And the fraction will be determined by the calcium concentration. So a higher calcium concentration will increase the fraction of these Fura 2 molecules that have calcium bound to them, basically. So these are the calcium ions here. Okay, so um, basically, at any given calcium concentration, a certain number of your Fura 2 molecules, a certain fraction of them, will be bound to calcium, and then the other fraction will be not bound to calcium. Now, the portion that are bound to calcium, when you, um, when, when you stimulate this cell with, let's say, we'll start with uh, wavelengths are of 320 nanometers. So we stimulate the cell with radiation of wavelength 340 nanometers. Now, the Fura 2s that aren't bound to calcium are going to have a certain fluorescence in response to that. If we look at this graph, they have a high fluorescence. Okay, so all of those are emitting high fluorescence. And the ones which are bound to calcium, their fluorescence in response to 340 nanometers has changed. So they will e emit uh, slightly less. So the actual fluorescence you'll get back will be somewhere in between those two, basically, because you've got a mixture of ones which are fluorescing at the higher level and the ones which are fluorescing at the lowest level. So you'll get somewhere in between. Similarly, when you then stimulate the cell with 380 nanometer uh, wavelength radiation, again, uh, the fewer two molecules which don't have calcium bound, they will be fluorescing at this initial um, amount. And the uh, fewer two molecules that are bound to calcium, they will be fluorescing with this uh, second, this blue uh, fluorescence. So if we look at the fluorescence overall of the cell, it will be somewhere in between those two because we've got a certain number of Fura 2s uh, bound to calcium and a certain number that aren't. And the more calcium you have, the more it will go towards the ratio between the two blues. Uh, it, you know, the more the fluorescences will get closer to the blues, and the lower the calcium, uh, the lower the occupancy of Fura 2s with calcium, and uh, the more it will go towards the state which is uh, where you just have Fura 2 unbound calcium. Okay, so what you can do is you can look at the fluorescence that the cell gives out in response to 340 nanometers. So you'll get a certain fluorescence readout from this fluorescence readout. And again, you'll get another fluorescence readout for 380 nanometers. And basically what you can do is you can take the fluorescence for 340 nanometers and divide it by the fluorescence for 380 nanometers. And you'll get a certain value. You'll get a value by which the fluorescence at 340 nanometers is bigger than the fluorescence at 380 nanometers. So this will tell you how much bigger the fluorescence at 340 is than the fluorescence at 380. And I believe that Fura 2, um, Fura 2 emits more radiation at 340 than 380 generally, even with um, calcium bound to it. So I believe this one is going to be bigger than this one. So you'll get some positive number which will tell you how much bigger is the fluorescence emission at 340 nanometer stimulation than it is at 380 nanometer stimulation. And basically from that ratio, you can deduce the um, amount of these Fura 2 molecules that are bound uh, to calcium. And from that, you can deduce the amount of calcium that's in the cell, basically. So this ratio tells you uh, information about the calcium concentration within the cytoplasm of the cell. And it's because um, the ratio will d be depend on the occupancy of the Fura 2s by calcium. So how many of the, what fraction of them are uh, bound to calcium rather than the absolute number. And that's very, very nice because um, this would, it, we 
because obviously um, your fluorescence, your absolute fluorescence, will remain will um, well it will be uh, dependent on how many fewer two molecules you have and how thick your cell membrane is and things like that. Whereas the ratio between them won't depend on silly things like that. So it's a very very nice measure for identifying calcium levels within cells.